Others, on the other hand, see obstacles as a natural part of life. Instead of wasting their energy pouting, they apply themselves with faith that they can get through it. They see each obstacle as a challenge and understand that there's something valuable to learn. Then, when they finally overcome the obstacle, it gives them a sense of accomplishment and makes the victory even sweeter. Number three, expect more from yourself and rise to the situation. No matter where you are in life, there's always room to improve. Victors understand this and have faith that no matter what life throws at them, they will do whatever it takes to rise to the occasion. Victims, on the other hand, don't believe that personal growth is possible. Or even worse, don't believe it's needed. It's not my fault. Who do you think I am, chop liver? Victims are often so busy blaming everything and everyone else for their problems that they don't stop to think about how their own growth can make things better. Victims are so defensive that when someone points out something that they could do to improve, they take it as an attack and don't use it as an opportunity to learn. If you pull your elbow in, it'll probably help you with that form a little bit more. Uh, I learned that from Curry, so I'm pretty sure I know what I'm doing. Thanks. Okay. Oh, man. When things aren't turning out the way you want, the first place you should look is yourself. There is always something you can do to improve your situation. Which brings us to tip number four. Number four, focus on what's in your control. Victims focus on everything that isn't in their control, and it's overwhelming. It creates anxiety and a feeling of helplessness. It's true that things outside of your control happen, like getting mugged, yes. or abducted by a UFO. But the good news is, there's a lot more that is in your control, and the quality of your life is more up to you than anyone or anything else. But victims don't want to accept this because they don't want to accept responsibility for their life. So they focus on everything outside of their control and ignore their own responsibility. It makes them feel better, but deep down they know they're not actually fooling anybody. Everything in my life is a disaster. It's not my fault. It's everyone else. What's the one common denominator between you and all of your problems? Victors focus their energy on what is in their control, and things turn out a lot better. For instance, instead of worrying about your boss firing you, focus on being a good employee. Instead of focusing on people judging your appearance, focus on developing a good fitness and hygiene routine. Number five, take ownership and find the path to success. There's this really amazing thing called free will. It's the ability to make decisions for yourself. The amazing thing is that no one else can make decisions for you. You get to decide what kind of person you're going to be, in small ways and in big ways. You get to decide if you're going to have a clean room or a messy room. You get to decide how hard you're going to study at school. You get to decide what you're going to do with your free time. You get to decide how good of an employee you're going to be. And you get to decide how you're going to use your money. You have power in your life. And that power is a God-given responsibility and privilege. The decisions you make right now are going to determine the person you'll be in the future. Victors understand that it's up to them to make the life they want. And that happens one good decision at a time. Freedom! So some Victims, on the other hand, give away their power to make good decisions. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Georgia versus Michigan. The third of four quarterfinal games that we have going on today or sorry this week uh no desktop audio because i do not have that set up through parsec and gerald is hosting this one but regardless also i don't think i have the twitch chat pulled up so let's take care of that really quick there we go and what's up guys uh gerald loves this ad i'm assuming that was the um uh what you might call it the slideshow music oh well is what it is sneak what's up man thank you for the another sub Inte gerald how's it going med p what's up buddy as blake quorum is off to a hot start on the ground seven yard rush gerald i don't think i blamed anything on you homie oh you're talking about sneak my bad anyway jj mccarthy back to pass man open over the middle it's hinting he goes up, makes a hell of a grab. AJ Henning, 35 yard reception. And a first down for Michigan. 
the bounce route comes open. Opening up the cheese for Georgia if he wants to pull it out. Corum's going to get the handoff up the middle. And it's looking like this fast paced offense for Michigan is going to be the theme of the game. Edwards checks into the game alongside McCarthy in the backfield. We got the post open. It's Anthony. Cover two in the red zone. Always a bad idea. And Michigan strikes first 7 0 with under, or sorry, 59 second touchdown drive. Not bad. Malachi Starks going to return that one 36 yards to the 28-yard line. A beautiful Gulf Coast Conference logo there on the field. We got the triple option. Kenny McIntosh up the middle. We're going to pick up two yards. If you haven't already, be sure to check out the RFCL revamped football league.com slash RFCL. It's the new coaches league we have coming up. Starting later this month, we have a few OC and DC positions open. If you are interested, apply on the website McIntosh gonna get it on the counter step back he's gonna pick up another two yards now third and six desperately needing the first down here for Georgia you gave up touchdown in 59 seconds you can't go for it on fourth so you're gonna need to pick up the full six yards to get to about the 40 yard line five wide coming in now Moore's gonna walk down with the safety wide receiver in motion from the right it's Ladd McConkey the go-to target for Stetson Bennett all season R1 is open. He throws back to McConkey though. A little risky throw because if he didn't get it, like I mentioned, he couldn't go for it on fourth, but he does pick up 13 yards on third and six. So a huge first down gain there for the Georgia Bulldogs. McConkey in motion again. R1's probably open on the corner, and this time Bennett, instead of putting it out where he could run under it, tries to bullet it, hits the defender in the back. So a rough start on the fresh set of downs. McIntosh with a beautiful spin move. He's going to pick up third, so 10, in, 10 yards, third and inches now. Now the goal line package comes in. It should be an easy first down. It is. It's Darnell Washington up the middle. Luckily, he was brought down by the safety. Otherwise, that probably would have been a walk-in touchdown for the Georgia tight end lining up at the fullback position in the goal line package. Five yard gain on. There we go. Thanks, Gerald. Five yard gain on first down is now going to get us to second and five. Triple option again. McIntosh up the middle. Breaking tackles down to third and two. And now, should Georgia see another, <clears throat> see their first fourth down in the game, they can go for it. Hey, I'll say that again. Go. So the stadium is confusing, man. It was so hard to find the booth up here. Hey, you found Why it. Why didn't no one tell me it was so hard to find it? Hey, you finally found it, and now you're in for a fourth and three. Georgia's going to go for it on their side of the 50. Sorry, the opponent's side of the 50, so plus territory. Fourth and three. I would say they could probably bang a field goal from here, but we're going to see two backs in the backfield. Washington and Kenny McIntosh. 
McIntosh in motion. It's a tight end screen. He throws it straight to the defender. Ball falls incomplete, and Michigan will take over. We'll see if they'll come back to bite him with, you know, an opportunity right there to possibly get some points. I'm not sure if the kicker can make it from that distance, but um, we'll see how this goes. Yeah, I think you missed it. Uh, the first drive of the game, Michigan scored in 59 seconds. Now a huge play there by the Georgia middle linebacker. Oh, I saw it. The crowd was going wild. I just was making my way upstairs, <laughs> going in the wrong doors, and, you know. Elevator trying. got stuck. Elevator was not stuck because I took the stairs. Gotcha. Makes sense. So second and 14 now. Balls dropped. Should have been an interception. Taki Smith making the deflection on the sideline. So a huge Coach third Breezy down. Breezy is pissed at the moment. Those are plays that his team makes most of the time automatically and just drops the ball. Let's be honest. That's a play you have to make here in the quarterfinals. You're already down seven. You're almost first quarter's basically gone at this point. I thought, yeah, I thought X was going to come open. He did eventually. 19-yard gain, a first down for the Michigan Wolverines. So, I think if Georgia can find a way to shut down this Michigan run game, they have a chance at winning this. As you saw, he's thrown it four times. One of those should have been an interception. Um, one of the completions were a bounce route. But if you let this Michigan team get it going on the ground, they are – Deadly. So a huge stop there for Georgia on first. And now Michigan probably going to go back to the pass game. Screen pass. Corum catches out of the backfield, but able to get back to the line of scrimmage. So third and eleven now in what could be the final play of the first day, first quarter. Another dropped interception there by Georgia. Luckily, it is fourth down. I don't think he's going to kick a 71-yard field goal. He can't go for it. He would have to use his one and only fake of the game. But Georgia with a huge defensive stops, two dropped interceptions, but luckily they do get the ball back. Michigan with a beautiful punt. Should be down about the 20 or 25-yard line, so a long way to go for the Bulldogs. You know, and as that DB was uh, coming off the field, I heard a coach scream, that's why you're a damn defensive back, because you don't know how to freaking catch. Yeah, and he's not wrong. You know, coaches are hardly ever wrong. Bennett throws it deep. That one's underthrown, and another dropped interception, the third dropped INT of the day. Yeah, and he's lucky to come away with just a deflection right there. Uh Coming out here just gunning the ball deep is not really what I expected Georgia to do early. Maybe get a running game going, but um, just an odd strategy compared to how he's played all year. He's had some openings in the pass, uh, passing game. I think he's thrown just a little too late, honestly. Uh, but, yeah, like you said, these are the two teams that are very strong in the run game. We got second and ten now. Bennett overthrows. His receiver, been has one for five for 13 yards so far to start the game. And if I remember correctly, um, Bennett's freshman season, or it may have been sophomore season in the RFL, um, I believe he came in drunk or maybe hung over, and it appears he may have done it this game too. Very well could have been. This is even a home game, so he knows the bars very well. Now he's under pressure rolling out. No one open. He's not going to be able to throw that ball. Oh, my God. There's no way he completes that pass if he's sober. There's no way. Wow. Rolling to his left, throws a cross body, and dots it up on the sideline. Hmm. 
Georgia's really starting to pick up their game. We're gonna come out in a really a four by one set. We got Spring a guy. Play, but nothing's open. Yeah, McConkey finally comes open over the middle. And Junior read it perfectly. He just kind of broke off of it a little bit too early. Gave the uh, Bennett an extra second to get that ball in there. Does it. And it's a huge gain for the Bulldogs. So, first and ten now from the 45. Counter play to McIntosh again. Spin move, cutting back inside, gaining one yard. This is just coming in from the sideline. I believe Stetson Bennett did sign a NIL deal with Pedialot, so there is plenty of jugs I see on the sideline. So I think he'll be okay for the rest of the game. That's good to hear. We definitely don't want any injuries coming in. Second and nine now. Five wide again for the Dogs. McConkey's open on the hitch, but Bennett's got other plans going the other way, and he's brought down fumble. Murphy picks up the fumble. Bennett, he's going to regret not throwing it to the wide open man on that one, and Michigan will take over. Blake Corum with a beautiful run. Breaking tackles down the right sideline, down inside the red zone now. 15 yards on first down. Michigan looking to take a double-digit lead. Shoemaker in motion. Going back to where he started now. Corum breaking the tackle. Spinning between defenders and picking up eight yards. Blake Corum, the workhorse of this Michigan team, having a pretty good day on the ground so far. Seven rushes, 47 yards, six and a half for carry. Now second and two, a good run look. I think Georgia's running a 3-3-5 three, three, defense. In the red zone. Probably not ideal against a run-heavy team, especially a team that uses a lot of 11 personnel. Corum with a beautiful step back, able to gain the extra yard needed for the first down. And now first and goal for Michigan, 306 to play. And honestly, Blake, I know there is a possibility of scoring right here on first down, but I'd at least like to see them turn on shoe clock, burn this clock just a little bit, just to get, make Georgia's life harder trying to score here before the half. Especially given that Georgia gets the ball to start the second half too. You know, and that's that was my thoughts was – you know, if you just stay and hurry up and keep the defense in that formation that they're in right now, I believe you can just score at will. But it does look like he's going to take the chew clock approach as he makes it to the one. Yeah, I mean, you're at the one second goal. Turn on chew clock. Turn off, you know, get this down to about two minutes. You know, you were literally, when you picked up the first down, you had like 3.05 on the clock, I believe. And there's, there's a big difference in scoring with 2.50 left and scoring with you know, two minutes, so we'll see what Junior likes to do here. Looks like he's going to bring Ronnie Bell in motion. He's got the right side open. There is no edge on the right side, but he goes up the middle. Joel Honig for one yard, rushing touchdown, Michigan 14, Georgia 0. You know, I'm, I'm hearing reports of disgraced, fired commentator um, Jerry, some call him Larry, some call him Gerald. Uh, he's been making comments about me lately. Um, just want to say, if I do see this man, Larry, it's on site. But uh, back to you, Gabe. Sorry to get off topic. No worries at all there. You got to handle your business. I respect it. We do have another game coming up after this in about two, well, a little under two hours, about an hour and a half it is, Oregon versus Alabama. Coach Bordeaux versus Coach Twist. We will have both cams on for that game. So that will be entertaining to say the least. Battling for the last spot in the semifinals. But Georgia, all three timeouts, two minutes on the clock, 75 yards to go. Score here, go down one score. Score again to start the second half. 
And that's not how you're going to do it. Turner uh, picks off the underthrown ball in Michigan, back in business and plus territory for the second time today. It wasn't a step back. It was more of a hezzy out of Blake Corum after receiving the handoff. It was beautiful, beautifully ran. Now if you're Michigan, don't want to force anything to come away with a touchdown. You need about 15 yards to secure the three points before the half. I think that should be the goal here. Corum's going to be stuffed after running up the middle and now a huge third down. I'm actually surprised Georgia's not taking a timeout. Yeah, and being up three scores going into the half, um, being the Michigan team that you've been, it's going to be a tough climb back up in the second half for the Bulldogs. I will say, at least for Georgia, you've almost forced two turnovers in your own right, and the, wow, that ball falls incomplete. That was a missile out of J.J. McCarthy. 61-yard attempt. Will he try it? I think he's debating it. Also debating possibly the fake field goal pass. We saw the play of the year coming in out of Mason on a fake field goal right before the half in the quarterfinal game the other night. And honestly, couldn't happen against a better person, Coach Larry. Um, you know, like I said, a guy who's uh, all talk like that, it just something like that needs to happen to him. Um, but it was a great play. It was the play of the year, in my opinion. Probably one of the better plays in RFL history, if I'm not. I don't know many that would compare. We do have the iconic fumble between Kansas State and Oregon. We have the pick the uh, pick six from Kansas State and Clemson. Um, there, there's a couple plays that are up there, but I don't know many that touch its caliber. If you missed it the other night, I'm gonna have to maybe I'll pull it up for you before the second game starts. But Georgia, 53 seconds, all three timeouts. Desperately need to score here. you got to get some kind of momentum in before the half. And he's taking a play out of Hawkeyes' playbook. The Cheese Seattle picks up nine yards for Georgia. Bennett back to pass. Brock Bowers ran into his own man, and then Bennett throws his third interception of the day. You know, and the way that play was designed, it actually fell apart. It was supposed to be kind of a pick play, but the players actually ran into each other. Yeah, I don't – I can't put that one fully on Stetsa Bennett. He did uh, throw it a little bit late. But regardless, Blake Corum is going to go up the middle, and he's going to – no, he's going to be brought down by Malachi Starks and a little bit of help from some other defenders. I think Gerald's actually in my DMs talking about uh, about re wanting to replace a broadcaster, and I don't think he's talking about me. As Blake Corum picking up six yards there and now first and goal, 12 seconds left. Gage, let me tell you, you tell that commentator he can meet me outside this door and we can handle this like men. If not, he can get out of your DMs. All right, we can just do it right now then, Blake. You heard the man. Nice to have you in here, Larry. <laughs> I can't be catching strays and you're going to, I mean, and I'm not responding to him. McCarthy on the run for his life here. Throws it, and it's picked off. Keely Ringo... And Georgia runs out of time. I respect the call by Michigan. I think he somehow burned 12 seconds off the clock on that final play. Zeke says, am I going to be in the coaches' league? Uh, some would say there's a good chance. Stay tuned to find out, Zeke. There's a couple things in the application process that we need to discuss uh, and discuss with the applicants themselves. So uh, that will be taken care of probably after this first game for some of you. As well as I think I we're actually doing a decibel test for each coach's voice, correct, to be sure it meets a certain decibel. I mean, I have to interview Zeke. I told him that that was a thing. So I have to one-on-one -on -one interview him. 
there you have it. Second three for Georgia. Only down 14. It feels like they're getting their ass kicked, but somehow they're only down 14 points in this game. McIntosh going to keep it on the triple option, pick up six yards and a first down. Sticking with 11 personnel, Brock Bowers in the slot. McIntosh up the middle, running into his own guy, still somehow managing to pick up three yards. Four and a half yards per carry for the dogs. <laughs> Second and seven, Bennett back to pass. No one really open. Throws the ball away instead of taking a sack for a fumble like he did earlier. I forgot, Bennett does have three turnovers. Two of them are being interceptions, one being the fumble. Could we possibly see a change at the quarterback? Maybe so. Yeah, if they can't find a way to get him hot, you know. Sometimes you have to do the changes whether you want to or not. Balls out, Lad McConkey. He's behind the defense. He's picking up 30 yards. And so far, Georgia just hasn't been able to get open. And, I mean, you can see it there. He's still tightly covered. Bennett kind of threw him open. And he led the ball perfectly, allowed him to get some yards upfield after the catch. Cool. Now Ben is going to keep it himself hard hit there by Moore on the sideline. Coach Bennett. Bridges is going to have to watch himself. He's setting himself up for more turnovers, allowing him to take hits like that. Definitely is, and that's the same play he fumbled on earlier, just the slant from the right side, the hitch from the left. Backup running back in the game now for Georgia. It's Edwards. He's going up the middle. He's picking up four yards in a first down. story of this game I, I wouldn't even say it are the dropped interceptions because Georgia had two dropped interceptions on the same drive that Michigan ended up punting on so sometimes the dropped interceptions do result in changing the changing the uh, outcome of the game I wouldn't say that's the case here so far going back to the trip set 11 personnel still McConkey to the left McIntosh checks back in He's going to throw to McIntosh. He's going to be brought down. Shoelace tackle by Harrell. Now third inches now for the Dogs. It seems like Coach Breeze is starting to figure his offense out. He actually had two receivers open after the snap, one on a little bubble screen on the right side. So maybe he can start putting something together. Maybe so. Play action pass wide, open, Gilbert. I think that's the third string tight end for the Dogs. Stetson Bennett finds his first touchdown pass of the day. Georgia cuts the lead in half. Isaac, what's up, buddy? Thanks for stopping in. I Sachs, Mr. Isaac, will be joining the RFL here soon. I think uh, Proving Grounds probably this season and then moving up next uh, for season nine. So. And from what I hear, Isaac's a god on the sticks in Madden, so maybe that can translate over to the RFL League. If it's anything like the first of us that tried that in Season 1 and 2, it will not, but I have faith. <laughs> first and 10 for Michigan. McCarthy and Corum in the backfield. 10 personnel. Oh, we got – oh, I thought the post was open. And the pressure by the Georgia D-line, who only brought three guys there, McCarthy – Throws another incompletion. He started the game three for four, 75 yards. Since he is one for five with no yards. So something to keep an eye on. And on that play, the safety was actually hidden by the logo in the middle of the field. So if the ball was thrown, we could have seen an interception. Now we got this circle corner route is wide open. It's the same route he threw earlier. So a huge first down to get those chains moving for the Wolverines. Now back to the run game. Corum trying to hit the right side. He does. He picks up about five yards on the 
halfback wide zone. Second and five. Oh, he's got a circle wide open, but McCarthy over throws him. This could be a game where whichever quarterback gets hot first ultimately leads his team to victory. McCarthy. Right, we've seen several mistakes by both sides. So you're right, if we can uh, get hot on one side of the ball, it might can take over this game. Yeah, McCarthy is 5 4 11. Ball's up. Ronnie oh. Bell dropped it. He, I thought he was going to make an incredible one-handed snag. Instead, falls incomplete. And Michigan can go for this. Right? I'm pretty sure. They can. Yeah, they can. Across his 40, Passes so it doesn't matter. Yep. Fourth and five. To flip the game on its head at home. Georgia needs a stop. Doesn't get it. Walker, 11 yards, first down. Coram's going to keep it this time. A beautiful juke move. He's that out on the left side, brought down after picking up 10. We'll call it a long nine. Now, second inches. Coram going to catch out of the backfield this time. Eight yard reception. Get some just a few yards closer to the red zone. Edwards carries it up the middle for six yards this time. Edwards, six yards again. Michigan, like we alluded to earlier, a beautiful ground game. They've had it all year. If they get it going tonight, they're going to be hard to stop. I believe the winner of this game actually faces the winner of Bordeaux and Twist, so we could see father versus son match up in the next round. McCarthy got the edge, cuts inside. He's going to walk in. J.J. McCarthy, 13-yard touchdown run, and Georgia is on the ropes. So first and 10, Bennett going to hand the ball off to McIntosh up the middle. Georgia's had a pretty decent ground game today, Blake. I will say that. Almost five yards per carry. Problem is, has they re have they relied too much on the pass game? They go back to it here. No one really open. Bennett's going to keep it himself, get out of bounds across the 40, seven-yard gain. And I think they ran out of time to build the run game to be able to establish a pass game being so late in the game. So um, if that's something they would have done earlier on, um, I think it could be a different ball game. Yeah, absolutely. Triple option again. McIntosh up the middle. Hard hit there by the safety. Second and three. Bennett back to pass. Has a few guys open, but he's... Is it called? Yeah, it's called. No. Oh. The it's, story of the game, Georgia dropping balls. The pain that Coach Breezy is going through right now. Because I'll probably say I don't think he had the layout to catch it. I think he probably could have called it and walked in. I thought it was going to be a catch and walk in the end zone as well. 
what hurts even more is if he would have stayed in the pocket, he probably could have hit a slant who might have walked in just as easily. Beautiful spin move by McIntosh as he makes him a miss. Really? McIntosh up the middle again, picking up seven yards this time on the inside zone. That will lead us to the fourth quarter. Michigan 21, Georgia 7. Made it back to pass, and it's picked off again, this time by Green. I think that was a user pick. Uh, looks like that's going to be face mask, I believe. Yeah, so that will stay Michigan ball. Worm's going to keep it on the zone play this time. Four turnovers for Georgia have been the death of them in this game. Down by two scores in the fourth quarter. Do we see Michigan turn on two clock? He has. Beautiful. McCarthy has a man open. It's Wilson. He's down the left sideline. Brought down inside the 30. Roman Wilson, 34-yard reception on just a fade route. That's twice I've seen Georgia torched in this cover. That was cover three. Regardless, the def the secondary for this Georgia team has just not lived up to expectations tonight. Now Corum's up the middle. Beautiful juke move. Both of these running backs tonight put the moves on some of these defenders. Corum's going to keep this one up the middle, picking up nine. And Michigan just wanting to put the icing on the cake. <laughs> Donovan Edwards with a backward spin move, going to pick up two yards. Now first and goal. Did you see the defender just run in the hole and stop? But this defense was just not prepared this game. Not focused, not prepared, dropped interceptions, dropped touchdowns. It's been a rough day for the dogs at home. Corum brought down in the backfield there on the halfback toss. 19 carries, 110 yards on the ground. Now third and goal. Michigan's only converting 25% on third down. <laughs> Guess run out of Georgia. Donovan Edwards brought down short, though. Georgia calls a timeout. Michigan's going to kick a field goal, extend their lead to three possessions. Pretty, sh am I not mistaken, Gerald, if you're still here, the backup quarterback for Michigan, his name is Orgy. It's what? O-R-J-I, Orgy. Did I say that correctly? Uh, uh, it might be. I mean, that would be a question for the head coach of Michigan. as to why his player's named that way. Hey, didn't, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they're on your computer and you make the rosters. Blake, am I wrong there? Uh, I think you'd be correct. I mean, yeah, I didn't make the rosters, but I also am told what names to use. That is true. That is true. As per Ugabuka is on Jacksonville State. Hey, Ugabuka's a menace. <laughs> All right. Another oh. interception. 
And ladies and gentlemen, there is your ball game. Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and mark this uh, Michigan plus four and a half as a uh, lock. And it's over. I think that's pretty much the game. I don't see Michigan, or sorry, I don't see Georgia coming back into this game. Will he run up the score as Mich or, uh, Kentucky did on Tuesday? Uh, with him having two clock on, I don't think he's going to intentionally score, but if the opportunity presents itself, I don't think he's going to stray away from it either. Sure. So Michigan will await the winner of the game later tonight. Twist versus Bordeaux, Oregon versus Alabama, kicking off in about an hour and 15 minutes. If it's your first time here, uh, D Butta, Excavate Kale. Uh, let's see. Anyone else first time here, be sure to hit that follow button so you know when we go live later tonight. Don't want to miss that game. Two time champion, Coach Twist versus famous YouTuber and TikToker Bordeaux will be. Uh, a battle for the ages, I'm hoping. And it's actually a highly anticipated game. Um, you know, earlier in the year, Twist actually made a comment regarding Bordeaux saying if they met, well, I believe it was he would demolish him or something along those lines. So Bordeaux's had this on his calendar for a long time. I, I believe the correct phrase is he called, he said that Bordeaux didn't go 0 and 10. You would be correct. Bordeaux has had bulletin board material all game. You do not want to miss that one. Kicking off in an hour and 15 minutes.